Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Creative Kindergarten Podcast. My name is Amanda, and I'm an early childhood educator in Ontario, Canada. I work in full day kindergarten, and I'm in my like sixth year of doing full day kindergarten in Ontario, and it's a space that I love, an age group that I love. And so I've started this podcast to share a little bit about how I think about kindergarten and what I do in kindergarten class. I just want to share that with all of you. So this week's episode is going to be about technology in kindergarten. So this is a question that I had from somebody on Instagram. So they follow me on Instagram and I I had asked on there if there was any topics or anything that um, you guys wanted me to speak about. And this is one that comes up the most often is how do I teach students how to use technology? How do I use technology in kindergarten? What are all the tips and tricks? So I'm somebody who loves to use technology in kindergarten. It's like one of my favorite things to do. I love finding new ways to integrate technology into our lessons, into our day, into our centers. And so I was going to talk a little bit about how exactly I do that, but I do have some other podcasts Um, about tech in kindergarten. One is my top five iPad apps for kindergarten. There's another one when I talk where I talk about um, coding in kindergarten and how I teach coding and also another one about how I use iPads in kindergarten classrooms. So there's lots of different podcasts on this subject already that I have out for you. And so if you have any other questions about using technology in the classroom, make sure you go check out those. I'll link them down below. I'll link them in the show notes and all that kind of stuff. So you guys can go take a listen to that. But yeah, technology is one of my favorite things in kindergarten. Our students are so Um, ready to learn about technology and about new technologies and how to use them in um, their everyday lives. So I find that integrating technology into the classroom is a great way to get students excited about topics. It's a great equalizer. It, It gives all our students an entry point into learning about different subjects. So if maybe they don't think they're great readers or writers or they're not great at math, but they know that they are great with technology, that's just a different way that we can get them excited about reading and writing and math just by using technology in our favor. Um, I'm not um, a person who loves to just give an iPad to a student and say, here, just go play on it for whatever amount of time. Um, I love using technology in a purposeful way. There is time for some downtime, some playtime on iPads and things like that. But I love to have a purpose behind why we're using tech especially during lessons. So how is the technology going to enhance the lesson, not just how are we going to replace our lesson with technology, if that makes sense? I think it makes sense. I want to make sure I'm I'm, um, enhancing things and making things better through the use of technology and not just adding an iPad to it because, oh, that's just the easier way to do it. So I've spoken about that before. Um, We have six iPads in our kindergarten classroom and we use those iPads for all kinds of things, literacy, math, science, you name it, we've used it for it. You can go check out those top five iPad apps. I have lots of ideas on there. And I also have um, that on my blog too. I have like how to teach coding and my top five iPad apps on my blog. So if you'd rather um, go and take a look at that, that's also on there. Again, I'll link that down below for you guys. So do how do I, as a teacher, use technology to enhance lessons in kindergarten. So the first thing I need to make sure I do is know how to use the technology, how to use the technology myself. So I can't give our students some piece of tech to use, but not have any background knowledge on how to use it myself. So um, I'll take for an example, a couple of years ago, we got a Sphero robot for our classroom. And this thing is awesome. It's a little ball that you control with an iPad app and you can code it in different ways and it just rolls around on the floor and it's really um, durable so you can like do bowling and things with it because it can smash into things without breaking but it's also waterproof and it's also like you can roll it through paint so you can do all kinds of great stuff with this Fero, but I'd never used it before so instead of just taking it out of the box and just going for it which you can do sometimes but I wanted to make this a really purposeful way of looking at the using the Sphero in our classroom. What I did was I just took it home. It was right before Christmas, we got it for our school. I took it home over Christmas break. My husband played with it and I just really learned how to use the Sphero and I came up with a plan on how I could use it in our classroom. So it's not like, I don't know if, if you guys are familiar with the Bbot and some other um, 
robots that follow a path that you code for it and then it just stays on that path. The Sphero can be controlled to just roll around anywhere in the classroom and I got really worried that the kids were just going to make it roll around everywhere. I was going to get stepped on or it was going to roll under a shelf or something and we wouldn't be able to get it back. So I wanted to really make sure that I had planned out how we were going to use the Sphero and I came up with like a step-by-step way that we were going to learn how to use it. So instead of just putting it out and saying, here, figure it out, I gave our students some different challenges. So once I figured out how to use the tech, I figured out how to challenge our students with the tech. So the first challenge was use the Sphero and make it roll around, but it has to stay on the carpet. And already that was a challenge because they had to learn about the different speeds because you can program it to go really fast or really slow. So they had to learn about this different speeds and they had to be able to calibrate it. And they learned about if the momentum of it, if it starts rolling really fast, it's really hard to just stop it on a dime and make it turn around. So all those kinds of those kinds of lessons were just built in to just keep the Sphero on the carpet. Then it, I had bought a tablecloth at Walmart, like a cheap $2 tablecloth plastic one, and I cut it into um, a smaller rectangle. And I said, okay, now your challenge is to keep the Sphero on the tablecloth. So then that was a few days of the students playing around with it. Again, playing with the speed. Now there's different programming that you can add into it. And then it was, here's some blocks. Program a maze that the Sphero can get through. And then they had to start playing around with directions and um, how uh, um, thick or thin they were making the passageway, if the sphere was going to fit through it, all that kind of stuff. So, and then we moved on to, can you figure out a way to make a ramp for the Sphero? And then we did painting with the Sphero to finish it off because that was just so much fun. And it was a great way um, to, to end off our unit and a great way to show how they've learned to control the Sphero with the speed. And we were mixing colors and all kinds of stuff like that. So I really got a chance to take the technology that we were, the new technology we we're going to introduce into the classroom and really learned about it, learned how to use it myself so that I could develop some really great challenges that were going to enhance the learning that we were doing in our classroom with the with that piece of tech. So in this case was the Sphero. So if if it's a brand new tool that you've never used before, a brand new app, a brand new robot, a brand whatever it is that you're bringing into your classroom, just make sure that you yourself know how to use it. You don't have to be an expert in it by any means, but you still have to know the basis of it so that you can see how it fits into your program. Become familiar with it and then come up with a set of challenges. What how do you what do you think that this can do to help in your planning to help the learning that's already taking place in your classroom? If you're learning about 2D, 3D shapes, how can this app, how can this piece of tech, how can this robot, whatever it is, help your students learn more about 2D shapes or 3D shapes. I can't even remember what I said, whatever I did. Um, so once you become more familiar with the tech, it's just easier to find ways to integrate it into your programming. And so that's really my first piece of advice. Be familiar with it, be purposeful with it. How are you going to use it in your classroom? My next piece of advice for using technology in the classroom is to collaborate in some way with other teachers who are using technology in the classroom. So what I mean is not even like one-on-one -on -one collaboration. Maybe it's that you're following in somebody on Instagram that always has some new ideas about technology that you've never seen before and then you get some great ideas from them. There's so much out there that I find it really hard to keep up to date with what's new, with what is out there for students to use. And so having people who are um, really experts in this space who, who I can follow and I can look to for new ideas is really important to me because I want to see what's out there. So um, I have a friend who's a teacher librarian who always has these great workshops that she's always connected to, that she invites me to, that um, she brings back some great info on. So I always love to connect with her. I always have some great people on Instagram that I follow. And then that I have all these great accounts that look at using technology in ways that I would have never even thought of. So there was one I saw just a few days ago and I'll try to find 
who this is and I'll link them down below so that I can give them proper credit for this because I can't remember off the top of my head who it was. But what they did was they had their B-Bots and they made like suits to go over the B-Bots to make different characters. So they were um, reenacting like, I think it was fairy tale stories. And so I'm just gonna make this up off the top of my head. But if it was like the three little pigs, they would have made the B-Bot the wolf. And so they made a little, um, kind of like almost like an armor, almost like a suit that goes over the top of it that looked like made it look like a wolf. And then so when they were reenacting the three little uh, pig story, they had the wolf going through um, on the bee bot, which was I thought was so fantastic. And it's a great way to integrate some art into the tech tools for that stem and really um, activating the creative process along with the coding. So finding those people that you can really um, look to for new ideas is so fantastic. And um, yeah, like I said, it, technology is changing so fast and there's new things coming out constantly that it's really hard for me to keep up to date with everything. So I love finding those people that I can connect with and that are also always looking for new ways to integrate technology into the classroom. And yeah, I love connecting with those kinds of people. Um, yeah, and I do a lot of workshops having to do with um, coding and STEM and technology. I went to one a few weeks ago. I posted about my Instagram where it was all kinds of coding robots and how, how to teach coding to, it was from like K to eight, I think. And so they had like a 3D printer there. They had some Oculus um, v, um, VR headsets that we could look at. They had um, some uh, different uh, coding tools that I'd never even seen before. And it was so exciting to be able to see that and um, learn more about it. I posted about it on my Instagram, if that's something that you'd like to see a little bit more about. But yeah, just always wanting to learn more about it because this is what our students, this is the foundation for what our students are going to need later on in life. And so if I can provide any kind of entry point, any kind of starting point for them for that, it's just going to enable them to be so much more successful, successful later on in life with those kind of things. So yeah, just making sure I'm like, I'm doing the professional learning that I need to do so that I can keep up to date with what they're going to need to know. Yeah, so it's, I love doing any kind of professional learning and this is just one that I always, I'm always on the lookout for some great um, tech professional learning opportunities. And yeah, having people in that space is really helpful so that I can keep up to date with what's going on. Another piece of advice that I have for you is that you can't be scared of using technology in the classroom. I get that a lot, that people are nervous about it. They're worried that something's going to go wrong, that they might not know how to do something or fix something. And yes, of course, you need to know how a particular piece of tech works in order to use it in the classroom or in order for it to be purposeful within your classroom. But don't let that stop you from just trying out new things too. So if you know the basis of how something works, but you're not 100% sure, let's say about a, a ro new robot that you're going to be able to use, so let the students start discovering it on their own. Let them, give them ownership on that tech tool and know in the back of your mind that you're going to have a purpose for it. But for right now, you're going to let them discover it too. And maybe that is your purpose for this particular tech tool is that you want them to figure out how it works. That could be your purpose. So I have a lot of um, teacher, teaching friends or teaching partners or other ECEs that I've worked with that are just so worried that something's going to go wrong. and using tech inevitably makes something go wrong. Like every time I try to do anything with tech, something just goes wrong. And we always said in our classroom, oh, we're having technical difficulties. Give me a moment to try to figure this out. And I would problem solve in front of the students because that is just as valuable to our students, showing them how to problem solve, how to work through things, and showing them that if something does go wrong, that's perfectly okay and we just have to figure out how to fix it. That is just as valuable as whatever other lesson you're going to teach them using the tech tool. Make sure they know that you can fail and it can still come out okay in the end because you can work through it and find solutions to whatever just happened. So uh, don't be afraid of that failure. Embrace it and know that the, the kids, they don't expect everything to go right every time especially if you are preparing them like, oh, I've never done this before. Let's see what's going to happen. Let's learn about it together. Or, uh-oh, we're having tech uh, technological difficulties. Um, let's see how we can solve this problem. And then maybe even ask them for feedback. How do you think I can solve this problem? What do you think we need to do? And then don't be afraid to say, hey, this didn't work today. 
I'm going to learn more about this problem and we'll come back to it tomorrow. And just come back to it, reset it, and try again the next time. I mean, it's not always going to work 100% of the time, and that's okay. And just know that even people who are somewhat, like, experts in the field, the, the, the technology will go wrong at some point anyways. So embrace it. Don't be scared of it. Just know that um, kids are very good at problem solving through technology tools. They love it, they wanna be able to use it. So they'll be patient with you and they'll learn alongside you. Another problem that I run into a lot or another question I run into a lot, I guess is a better way to say it, is that people don't have enough technology to go around. So maybe they only have one robot or one tablet or whatever it is, one piece of technology for the classroom and you have like 20 plus students in your room. So what do you do at that point? I wouldn't say abandon using technology in the classroom just because you only have a small amount of it. I would just say that, hey, it's just going to take longer for everybody to have a turn. And maybe that's just one table, one center that students can work at. It's a great way for students to work together, to share, to cooperate, and to problem solve with each other if they get to work with it as a group. So making sure that they know how to take turns and letting everybody have a turn at that table and having it set up as a center is a great way to go work through that. And then if you have it out for multiple days, then every student gets a chance to go and work with that piece of technology. I don't think that that should be a barrier to you using technology in the classroom. I just think that that's, you just have to figure out a way that it works within your room. So if it's a coding robot, whatever it is, just make sure that every student who would like to have a turn gets a turn and just make sure you're, you're showing our students that they can work together and that it doesn't necessarily have to be an independent station to work with something. It could be something that's worked at together and maybe that's part of the lesson is um, having students all come up with their own ideas and then having to share those ideas and coming up with different solutions on their own. So I hope that this little podcast episode um, was helpful for you in thinking about using technology in your classroom and maybe taking off some of the pressure that using technology can put on um, some teachers when they're using it in the classroom. And I hope that this um, episode just gave you permission to try it, permission to just go out there and maybe that's something that you're going to do in the new year is going to be trying a new piece of technology for your classroom. I always love, love seeing how technology is being used in different kindergarten classrooms. So please make sure that if you do anything new or you want to try anything new, you tag me on Instagram or Facebook or send me a message through my blog. I'll make sure I put all the links in the description of this uh, podcast episode so you can get in touch with me. Make sure you're tagging me and letting me know what you're doing with technology in your classroom. I'm always looking for new ideas. I'm always looking to share new ideas. So I'd love to see what you are doing. Um, just to let you know that because of the holiday season coming up, I'm going to take two weeks off of filming this podcast. So I will be seeing you guys in the new year. And I'm so happy that um, this year of doing podcasts seems to be going so well. And everybody has been so positive with um, these episodes. And I'm really thankful for all the positive feedback that I've gotten. And I just wanted to say thank you and have a safe and happy holiday season. And I will see you all in 2020. Have a great week. Bye.